Hi everyone, I'm, I'm Zach, Zach Reinhardt, here to review the new Hijo Kaidan and Togawa Jun collaborative album, Togawa Kaidan. Now, since my reviews are mainly focused towards people like me, who are coming at Japanese music from an outsider's perspective, and the historical context can be kind of hard to get sometimes. And I feel that both of these artists are important to their respective scenes. I'm going to talk a little bit about the history of these artists. So I'll put a little annotation for you to skip to the actual record review if you want to do that. All right, so Hijo Kaidan has been around since the 80s. And they're a pretty prolific and seminal kind of free improvisation noise group. They've had a revolving cast of members, but it's mostly been centered around uh, one man, Jojo. He's the guitarist and kind of the mastermind behind Hijo Kaidan. Now these guys are one of the biggest names in like Japanese history. Um, they put out a ton of records, like 30 or 40, um, if you include live albums. Now at some point they stopped doing kind of solo work and started doing a lot of collaborations. They did stuff with a lot of other kind of underground experimental artists. Now at some point Jojo got the idea to do a record with an idol group, which culminated in the collaborative album between Biss, no not the Scottish band Biss, no, not the Visual K band, Biss. The brand new Idol Society, Biss. The record was called Biss Kaidan, and it was strange. But they covered a song on there called Ski Ski Daisuke, which was originally by Togawa Jun. Then, for the Hijo Kaidan 35th anniversary record, they did another version of Ski Ski Daisuke, but they brought on Togawa Jun to do the vocals this time. And this has culminated in this record being produced with Togawa Jun. Now Togawa Jun is a pretty interesting figure in Japanese music because she started out in the 80s and really blew up as a pop star. But even her, her pop stuff was kind of dark and a little bit weird. And she had this odd ability to go from this very kind of high-pitched, kind of cutesy, uh, almost purposefully annoying vocals to these kind of operatic falsettos that she would hit. So she was always a bit of an odd bird, but what makes her really unique what is the way she transitioned from being a pop star to being a bit more avant-garde and experimental and getting a lot of respect out of the more underground music listeners with bands like Yapu's and Guernica and her solo stuff she kind of explored a dark synth wave that sometimes had some disturbing lyrics I really think both of these artists are seminal and important and I really recommend that you dig into their discographies. Um, I'm personally more of a Togawa Jun fan than a Hijo Kaidan fan but they're both important and interesting in their own right. Now moving on to the record itself. What you're getting here is 11 tracks that kind of alternate from free improvised Hijo Kaidan noise to a cover of a Togawa Jun song with noise like littered throughout and thrown on top. The purely noise parts of the record are recorded from Hijo Kaidan live shows and don't feature Togawa Jun and they really just kind of break up the space between the meat of the record which is these covers. Now they do a third cover of Ski Ski Daisuke which I feel like is actually a bit worse than their last one. The instrumental is pretty stripped back and kind of minimal. It almost feels like a MIDI track, 
and then you've got Jojo just wailing feedback on top of it. It seems like just a little bit too minimal, but what really saves the track and makes it decent is uh, Togawa Jun's vocals. She approaches the track with this kind of deep, dark, raspy, kind of sinister sounding voice that she uses throughout the whole album, and it really saves the track from being pretty mediocre. But then they cover Virus, which is one of my favorite Togawa June tracks. It's actually a Yapu's track. It's got these dark industrial synthesizers and this kind of wailing guitar noise and these like electronics that are just kind of freaking out. And Togawa June really sounds kind of dark and brooding and kind of mysterious. And it really does a lot of justice to the original track, which was also kind of dark and disturbing. And of course, June hits her kind of signature falsetto, and it sounds great. And it's probably my favorite track on here. There's also their cover of Hysteria, which has this like very extreme juxtaposition of these like big 80s-esque like synth and guitar chords over this just like screeching feedback that uh really just kind of you take a step back and just look at this song and you're like what the fuck am i listening to (laughs) but overall i think most of the songs go over pretty well but i haven't really talked much about the noise tracks the noise side of the record is harsh and abrasive and it's visceral and very thick and it's very well produced as well Um, there are these high-pitched squealing noises that are never ear piercing which is amazing and really a testament to how good the mixing is on this they cover a really broad range of noise as well from the kind of crazy free improvisation of Togawa Kaidan no theme, to Jojo's wailing guitars, to the kind of weird freakish synths that are bassy and sputtering and strange. The only real low light for me is the song Junko to Junko, which is where Junko, Jojo's wife, uh, kind of shouts and squeals for about three minutes. Um, I can't really tell if she's saying anything. Her vocals are entirely unintelligible. I can't make out a single syllable. And I get that this is taken from a live show, and if this was, like, in the middle of a live show, and I was, like, just observing the spectacle of a Hijo Kaidan show, this would probably be a bit more of a unique point for me. But it doesn't really translate well to just being on record. And uh, it, it, it just, it doesn't really do much for me. But overall, I like the record. They cover a pretty broad range of sounds. Um, I wish there was a little bit more focus on, like, the covers of Togawa Jun and her vocals as the majority of the album is just noise, and if I just wanted to listen to Hijo Kaidan make noise, I'd just go listen to their tons of solo records. But overall, the record goes over pretty well. Um, I don't really feel like any of these covers are improvements upon the originals, but they're definitely a new and interesting take on them. I'm feeling a 6.5 out of 10. Um, There are definitely some highlights here, but there are also some kind of mediocre moments, and uh, there are a few moments where I feel like the noise isn't really doing anything for the song, and it's just kind of there to remind you that this is a Hijo Kaidan record. So yeah, um, that's me, Hijo Kaidan, Togawa June, new collaborative album. It's decent.